In the last episode, we talked about how to delete a file from our website. And in this episode, we're going to talk about deleting multiple files because you guys have been asking me in the comments, how to delete more than one file. So what we're going to do today is based off the previous lesson, as you guys can see all the code I have in front of me here is directly the same as we did previously. Uh, we're going to go ahead and delete more than one file, meaning we can type in multiple names and delete all those files at once. So what I have in front of me here is two files. I have the index page and I have the script that goes in and deletes the file. So based off this code, you guys can just go ahead and copy it here because there's not a lot of code if you don't have it yet. Uh, we're going to go ahead and delete multiple files. So the first thing we're going to go ahead and do, at least the way I want this to work, is I want to include an input inside the form we created inside our index page. So right now, as you guys can see inside the browser, we just have a delete button. So what I want to do here is I want to include an input where we can type the name of the file we want to delete. So what we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and include an input. I'm going to go ahead and give it a type as text. I'm going to set a name to file name. And I'm going to go ahead and include a placeholder because we need to tell the users what we want them to do in order to delete more than one file. So in here inside the placeholder, I'm going to say separate each name with a comma. Then we just add maybe some parentheses with a comma inside of it so they understand what they need to do. Um, and then afterwards, we're going to go ahead and include a styling inside the input because we want it to be slightly longer since this text we just included in here is quite long. We need them to see everything. Uh, we're going to go ahead and style it. So I'm going to say style equal to double quotes with should be 300 pixels. So right now, if I were to go inside my browser, refresh, you guys can see we now get an input that says separate each name with a comma. Okay. So what we can do now is we need to go ahead and do a little bit of error handling. Because if I were to say, okay, inside my website, or at least inside my root folder, I have two files. I have one called cat.jpg and I have one called laptop.jpg. First of all, if I were to type in a couple of names and I were to either use, let's say, cat.jpg space or maybe comma space uh, laptop.jpg, as you guys can see, we have not just a comma, but because of habit from some users, we also have a space. So we need error handlers that goes in and checks if we included spaces or any kind of weird stuff and then eliminate it because we don't want to have this space in here when we do actually need to run the scripts inside the next page. So what we can do here, I'm just going to go ahead and delete what we have here, is I'm going to go ahead and go inside our script, which is in here. And we're going to go ahead and do quite a few things. Because first of all, we need to grab the data we have inside the input, which right now is called file name. I'm just going to go ahead and copy that, go into our script, and I'm going to go ahead and create a variable called, let's just call it file uh, name or names with an S behind it. I'm going to set it equal to dollar sign underscore post brackets. And inside the post super global, we're going to go ahead and include the name file name because that's the name inside our input. So after we have the name or at least the long string that the user typed in, we can go ahead and replace all the spaces with no spaces because we need to eliminate all the spaces or any kind of other weird characters that we might think of inside whatever they type in. So I'm going to go ahead and say we have a variable called remove spaces is equal to a string or not a string, but a method called string replace or string underscore replace parentheses. Now inside of this, we need three different parameters. First of all, we need to tell it what are we searching for? What do we want to replace it with? And then afterwards, we need to tell it which string we want to check. So the first thing is two double quotes where we say, okay, if we find a space, then we want to comma, double quotes, replace it with no space. So we're not going to include anything inside these double quotes here. And then afterwards, we want to include file names because that's what we want to check and then replace all these spaces with. So now that we have this, we can actually go ahead and go down to the next line where we need to separate each thing that they typed in using commas. So what we're going to do down here is we're going to create a variable called all file names. 
and set it equal to explode, which is a function we have inside PHP that separates all the, you know, a string using specific characters. So if we have commas, we separate the string all the places we have commas. So inside the explode, we're going to say we have a character called comma. And the next parameter is going to be the string that we want to replace or at least separate using commas. So we're going to take our remove spaces and insert as the second parameter. So right now what we actually have is if I were to go ahead and print this out inside the browser, if I just comment out everything else we have underneath here, if I were to do a print underscore R and do all file names, semicolon, and then run this script inside my browser, I can say cat.jpg, comma, space, laptop.jpg, and then run it, you guys can see we now get an array, which is down here. We have two different data. Inside the first space, we have cat.jpg, and inside the second data, we have a laptop.jpg. And as you guys can see, we actually separated, the, or at least removed the spaces, and then separated each name you know, using the comments. So now that we did this, we can actually go ahead and delete the print R because we don't actually need it. And before we actually start deleting these files, because now we have the names, so we could essentially just do the same thing as we did down here using a loop. But what if we type in a name that doesn't exist inside our root folder or inside the website? We need to come out with an error message. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do here before we start deleting files is I'm gonna go ahead and create a for loop. And this for loop is gonna go ahead and loop out each time we have a piece of data inside this array. Because right now it could be two pieces of, you know, two names you have inside the array, or maybe the user typed in six names inside the array. We don't know. So we need to make sure we loop out the number that we have inside the array. Of course, right now we don't actually have the number, so we need to get that as well. So what I'm gonna do inside right before the for loop is I'm gonna go ahead and create another variable. I'm gonna call this one count all names. And then I'm gonna go ahead and set it equal to something called count, which is a function we have inside PHP that actually counts how many pieces of data we have inside an array. So I'm gonna go ahead and put all file names inside the count, which now counts out how many different pieces of data we have inside this array up here. So now we can use this variable down here that counts the number and set it in as you know the limit we want to loop. So now that we have the limit, we can go ahead and go inside the for loop that goes in and checks if we have a certain file inside our website. And if we don't have a file, we want to stop it from running the script we would inside right now and just print out some kind of error message. So the way I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna go ahead and create an if statement. And inside the condition, we're gonna go ahead and create a PHP function called file underscore exists, parentheses. And what this one does is that it goes ahead and takes a certain path we might have to our file and checks if it does exist. If it does not exist, it's gonna return as false, or if it does exist, it's gonna return as true. So we need to make sure we don't get any false results using these loops here. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna go ahead and take the path we created in the previous episode, which is down here, called uploads forward slash cat.jpg, and I'm gonna paste it inside the function. Now, because the name is not cat.jpg, but the, the name we have inside the array that we created up here, we're gonna go ahead and take this array, at least the name of it, and we're gonna replace it with the last part of the, the path called cat.jpg, because right now we don't know the name, it depends on what the user types in. So we're gonna go ahead and say we want to delete it. And then afterwards, we're gonna include the variable we have up here called all file names. Now, of course, right now, all file names is an array and we need to get each data, meaning that we need to add brackets behind it and tell it which number data we want to check. Now, the cool thing about the for loop is that right now, it starts at zero and then each loop is gonna add one number to it meaning that right now, the first loop variable i up here is going to be equal to zero. So we can actually take variable i and put it inside the brackets because right now it's called all file names zero, then the next loop is called all file names one, 
and it's only going to continue as many times as we have uh, you know, data inside this array up here. So after including the parameter inside the file access function, we now need to check if it's going to return as true or false. So we do that by setting it equal or equal equal to false. Because right now, if we can't find any of the names or at least just one of the names we have inside the string we typed in, then it's going to go ahead and do whatever's inside the if statement. So if we do not have the file that we want to delete, then we want to return the user to the front page with an error message. So we say header, double quotes, location, colon, index, dot, PHP, question mark. And then we say delete error. So now inside the URL, when we do actually get an error message because the file doesn't exist, we get returned to the front page with this URL up here that says delete error. So we can actually see if we do actually have the file or not. So now that we have this, we need to do one more thing because if this if statement here runs, we want to make sure that the script doesn't continue because what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna go ahead and continue the delete function outside the for loop. So because of that, we need to make sure we actually do end this script we have going on in here inside the entire page if we get one of these error messages. So what we're gonna do after the header function is we're gonna go ahead and say exit parentheses, which is a function inside PHP that simply exits the script and prevents anything else from running, okay? So now that we did this, we just checked if this, if the names do actually exist inside our website. If it doesn't exist, then it's gonna give us an error message by returning us to the front page. So the next thing we need to do is actually loop out the unlink functions that actually goes in and deletes the files. Because once we've done that, and we make sure that all the files do actually exist because we just checked it, we just deleted all the files that we typed inside the input. So the way we're gonna do this is we're gonna go ahead and create another for loop right underneath the first for loop, like so. And we're gonna go ahead and run the exact same parameters inside uh, the for loop. So I'm just gonna copy what we have here. And then inside the loop, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and copy everything we have down here, which we created in the previous episode, copy it and paste it inside the for loop and just move it out so it looks nice. And what we need to do now is we need to make changes to the path because it needs to be the exact same thing as we did when we did actually do the file exist uh, function up here. So we need to go ahead and copy everything we have in there, like so, because right now, because the for loop is the same, it's also gonna go through each file individually with this file name that we have here. So doing that, when we run this if statement down here, it will in fact go in and delete each file. Now, because we are running a loop, right now, you know, using a for loop, we can't do the header function inside the loop. Otherwise it's gonna, you know, exit us from this uh, document here, or at least exit from the script before we get done up, uh, deleting all the files inside the website. So what we need to do here is we need to copy the header function and then delete the entire else statement we have here and then go down outside the for loop and paste it in. Now what we also need to do is because we're checking for errors right here, is we also need to exit the script. And we could, instead of an echo, we could also do the same thing as we did up here by you know, creating a, a header function that returns us to the front page with an error message. But I'm just gonna go ahead and leave it the same as the last episode. So this is basically all we need to do. If I were to go back inside my website, refresh, type the name of the files I have inside my root folder, which right now is cat.jpg, and laptop.jpg, you guys will see that we do actually get these files deleted. So I'm just gonna write cat.jpg, comma, space, laptop.jpg, delete. And as you guys can see, it says delete success. Or maybe you cannot see this because it's quite small up there. But if I go inside my root folder, you guys can see they're gone. So this is how we can delete multiple files from a website. And, and do bear in mind, this is without using JavaScript, which means that right now, you know what you could do using JavaScript is you could go in and type one name of a file. Then when you write comma, you could include a second 
input underneath it, it just pops up with this, you know, where you can type in a second name if you wanted to. But because we're not gonna use JavaScript in this episode, because this is a PHP series, I wanted to teach you guys how to do this only using PHP code, okay? So hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you guys next time.